Hello everyone, Terry Welbrock here for Healing Place Podcast. Just wanted to take a moment before today's beautiful episode on gratitude and healing and so much more um, to talk about, gosh, just all my happy news and how much I have gratitude towards everything that's going on. So we finished the last of this house projects and uh, ripped out all of the carpet. When we did so, we found remnants of mold upstairs. Uh, And so we were able to have that remediated by our remediation team with help from them Um, and put in some new flooring ourselves. And it looks magnificent with quarter round and just absolutely beautiful. But knowing that the last of it is all out of this house and my body this rash that I've been battling for those of you who have been listening in for the past almost two years is just clearing up so quickly. So um, it's just been a combination of a lot of healing work that I've been doing. Uh, I have started the Gupta program and doing some brain rewiring. I've been doing EMDR therapy. I've been doing some somatic work. So all the things we talk about on the show Uh, Just implementing a lot of it, Um, gratitude practice is a part of that. So just here to say, yes, all of this that we talk about, these beautiful conversations, it's uh, just magnificent for uh, helping our bodies along the healing journey. And uh, that holistic part of it, the spirit, um, the mind, all of it. So, all right, such a great episode today. Enjoy. Welcome, everybody, to the Healing Place podcast. I'm your host, Terry Welbrock, and so very thrilled to have with me today Holly Bertone, and she is a best selling author, speaker, and gratitude coach, and so much more, podcaster, and so forth. So, welcome, Holly. Thanks so much, Terry, for having me on your show. I'm excited yes, to connect with everyone. I'm, I'm excited to talk about, uh, oh my gosh, well, your personal journey of triumph. I, and there's so many things that I saw as, as I was. Uh, stalking your website and so forth, but grumpy warriors to grateful warriors. I love that. I I talk about being a trauma warrior myself, but I love the idea of being a grateful warrior and living a life of gratitude. So would you like to share with us uh, your personal journey uh, to becoming a grateful warrior? Oh, sure. Absolutely. And I always like to say my, um, my journey begins with kind of the day before. And what I thought I was living the perfect life because I was, I had a management position. I was the chief of staff at one of those three letter federal government agencies that they make shows about TV shows about. So I was in a national security um, position. It was very high profile and I was super excited to be on that journey with my career. I was racing Xterra races, the off-road mountain bike triathlons and mountain bike racing drinking margaritas with my girlfriends and living in sin with my my boyfriend. And if you could have asked me at, you know, wave a magic wand at the age of 38, what would your perfect life be like? Like that would have been it. I mean, I don't think I could have made it any more perfect. And then on my 39th birthday, that was when everything changed because I was um, commuting home from work and I got the phone call from my doctor and he said those dreaded words. I'm sorry to tell you uh, that you have breast cancer. And we had, I'd been going through probably about two months worth of tests. So I knew in my heart, like deep, deep down in that place that you don't want to go when I felt the lump that this is it, but it's until you hear those words that it just really, really sinks in. And then two days later, my boyfriend proposed. So it was, you have cancer and will you marry me? all at the same time. And then trying to be a sexy fiance and going through surgery and chemo and radiation and, you know, really just hitting rock bottom with my health. And we ended up getting married 10 days after treatment ended. I was still very sick and very bald on our wedding day. And then as I started to heal, I actually didn't heal. I wasn't getting better. And so I kept going back to my doctor and like, like, something's wrong. And they told me the same thing over and over again, 
that they're like, oh, well, you know, your, your body, it's going to take some time to recover. And I was like, all right, I am 39 years old. Um, I used to race ex terras Like that's pretty hardcore. Like I was a solid athlete and all these girls in support group, they're going out and they're racing those, you know, 5k pink ribbon runs and walks. I'm like, I can't get out of bed. Something is wrong. So it took about a year of test and I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is the autoimmune component of hypothyroidism. So the two most common symptoms are weight gain and uh, basically chronic fatigue, debilitating chronic fatigue. But I was like, and, and not to compare the two, but I was like, just give me my medicine, right? Just give me my medicine and I'm going to be fine. Like I had no idea the journey ahead of me and how absolutely debilitating that chronic fatigue would be to the point where in 2017, my health got so bad and hit rock bottom that um, my management team wanted nothing to do with me. And they actually illegally rescinded my FMLA, which is your approved sick leave. Um, your your it's the law. It's, you, you know, if you're a federal employee, you have approved sick leave and they illegally rescinded it. And I was pretty much forced to retire. So that was rock bottom. Number one, number two, and number three, because that's what overachievers do, right? It's not just one rock bottom. We've got to do it multiple times. <laughs> wow. Yes. And I'm, my heart just goes out to you and, uh, it, 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 as an overachiever <laughs> myself, I have uh, been on a similar journey and it, it's so tough when you just are spiraling, spiraling, spiraling. So how did you hold on? What, what did you grab a hold of? So two things, first of all, um, I, so I use humor and when I was diagnosed on my birthday, you know, there was a lot of boohoos and obviously the grief and the you know, emotions and everything like that. But I kept joking. I'm like, you know, some girls get earrings or flowers. I got breast cancer on my birthday. Like that was my gift. And I said it so many times. I think I convinced myself and about a month or two into treatment. Like, I just kind of was like, huh, it was just this presence, this piece about me that I was like, okay, this is a gift. I don't know what or why or how, but I knew that there was a greater calling. Like I knew something amazing was going to happen and I didn't know what that was. So that was number one. And then number two was when, <clears throat> when I was, uh, when I was, or when my mother was pregnant with me, she was diagnosed with Addison's disease, which is a very rare adrenal disorder. So growing up, I always heard her in times of sickness and in health, she always kept saying it builds fortitude. It builds fortitude. And I didn't really know what it meant until I went through my own challenges. And throughout that time, throughout the time from breast cancer and autoimmune and the chronic fatigue, I kept saying it builds fortitude. Like these are the tough times that, you know, I'm building fortitude. I'm building that mental strength and that, you know, mental resilience. But it wasn't until after she passed in 2019 that I really started to dive in to the it that she was talking about. And it had nothing to do with the tough times and everything to do with gratitude. Yes. Oh my gosh. And as I've been through this personal journey as well, uh, I was meditating this morning and doing that exact thing, like looking for the gifts within this journey and it is incredibly powerful when you're able to step back from the pain or the heartache or the why me <laughs> and and look at what am i learning from this what 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 is the resilience that i found in myself and yes fortitude i love the i love that word and the idea of it beautiful thank you yeah awesome so now you have a a business that you run around fortitude, correct? Yes. Yes. Pink fortitude. And my uh, podcast is gratitude builds fortitude. And yeah, I coach women who have gone through similar health challenges. When I, when I was forced to resign in 2017, 
Um, the first thing that I did was um, sleep and pretty much stay in bed for a very long time. The second thing I did was write a uh, book that ended up becoming an Amazon number one bestseller in two different categories. And then the third thing I did was become a certified natural health coach and really start diving into not just health and healing from a holistic perspective, but really focusing on gratitude and mindset. Because what I found is that so many, so many women out there that I work with, they, they, they do the right things. You know, they, they work on their nutrition or get more sleep or maybe do some more movement, but there's always a missing piece. And that missing piece is typically some type of, and, and I'm sure you're very well aware of it with your community as well. That missing piece is typically some type of emotional component and really exploring healing, beginning with the mindset and beginning in a state of gratitude and using that as your superpower to really start down that journey to make the healing process one that is lasting, that's going to stick. I love that. Now, do you use, use gratitude as like a mindfulness practice? I, I, and I only ask because that's what I do. And I, I talk about it so often on the show. My audience is probably like, oh my gosh, here she goes again. But <laughs> I will be watering my flowers and see a butterfly and I'll just pause and be like, oh my gosh, hi, you're so beautiful. And thank you for pollinating. And I just, again, I'm always like, thank you, God, for the beautiful sunset. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just always trying to find, I find hearts everywhere. So then I pause and I'm like, Oh, thank you for the sign. Like again, but I consider that a mindfulness practice because I'm very much in the now and yes, but gratitude component weaved into it. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm glad you asked that Terry. And, and that is so beautiful. And I actually, whenever I see like a beer, but I like cheer for them, I'm like, yay, go pollinate, you know, yes. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm really glad that you asked that because here's the thing. There's what almost 8 billion people on the planet and gratitude is free for everyone. But what I found is that approximately 70% of the women who initially join my community say that either they can't be grateful, they don't know how to be grateful, or they've tried gratitude and it doesn't work for them. And to me, that's unacceptable. And when I started, when I realized this and I started really diving into, you know, the brain science of gratitude and how it completely rewires your brain, not just that, but why, why isn't it working? And not just from the, you know, the women in my community, but looking at it from the perspective of there are so many challenges out there in life, you know, just individuals in general have so many challenges that we deal with on a daily basis. So why is it so hard to be grateful, you know, and, and the traditional approaches to make a list of three things you're grateful for, make a list of five things. That's how I got started. I, I would, if I could flip a coin and make a bet, I'm guessing that's probably how you got started. So it's how we're told to start, but if it doesn't work, it doesn't mean that gratitude isn't for you. It just means there's a different way to approach it. And I like to call that from an inside out approach to really exploring gratitude, not as a place of making a list, like a grocery list, but as a place of inner transformation. And once that inner transformation starts to happen, right, it, it starts to shift your mindset and you, it literally can start shifting and the, the healing process and reversing the cycle of disease and has so many healing properties. It's just, I think so often, you know, we kind of get on that treadmill and we try it and it doesn't work. And then we're like, okay, I'm going to make a list. And then it doesn't work. Or, you know, your, your partner comes home in a bad mood. So now you're in a bad mood or, you know, something happens like a bad day at work and, or you get stuck in traffic and, and you're like, okay, I'll just do it tomorrow. And then you forget. And then a month later, you're like, okay, I'm going to start my gratitude list. And it's just like this, this cycle, like this treadmill. And I was like, okay, no wonder, right? No wonder it's so hard because we're in that space where things are so negative to begin with. It's really hard to, you know, kind of turn it upside down 
and view gratitude from that inside out approach to really begin the healing process. So yeah, that's why I love what I do. Yeah, well, and as you spoke, and yes, you were correct, I, I would make lists, I had a gratitude journal, and I would write my lists, you know, I'm thankful for, I'm thankful for, I'm thankful for, I felt like, you know, the kid on the chalkboard, <laughs> writing it down. But it was also I have like a huge pile of journals, it was right next to my blue day journal, or it was right next to, you know, another journal that I was talking about, things that were happening that were heartbreaking in my life. And so um, it just seemed like a way now I do think I'm so glad you brought up rewiring that brain plasticity brain plasticity component of it because it became habitual in, in a way of focusing on it but i love your idea of then more of then bringing it to the inside and yeah, yeah beautiful yeah thank you yeah and there's nothing against and, and i want to make sure that everyone listening understands i'm not against the list of three things if the list if writing a list of gratitude is working for you by all means, continue to do it. But if it's not, then it doesn't mean gratitude isn't for you. It just means let's try it a different way. And, you know, and I love to get into, um, you know, kind of personality based gratitude, because there are many different ways that you can express gratitude, like you were talking about walking around and, you know, expressing gratitude to the to the butterflies. I'm like, there's a million different ways that you can start a gratitude practice. It doesn't have to be the list of three things. Yeah, I read a book on mindfulness. And that was the first thing that was an aha moment for me was, um, it was when you sit down to your food, just pause for a second and say, Oh, my gosh, thank you, chicken for these eggs. And, and like, really seriously, like, think about a chicken like in the yeah. eggs and just be so full of gratitude for it. And I just remember reading that and pausing and being like, Oh, my gosh, I never even thought about trying to just internalize that, that just living from gratitude, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the other thing, you know, to Terry, and, and I know you talk a lot about this on your podcast is, you know, kind of dealing with that emotional state and that trauma and looking at, you know, again, regardless of what kind of challenges that we're going through. Um, and if I'm allowed to be a little gross for a second, I like to talk about the um, kind of the clog sink. Can I be a little gross for a second? Sure. Is that okay. We talk <laughs> so, about all kinds of stuff on here. So sure. Yeah. So, you know, when you're, you're like, say your bathroom sink is clogged and you go to brush your teeth, right? So you have a little bit of water going to, to, as you're starting to like, and you spit and you've got toothpaste spit in the water. And then, you know, maybe some pieces of food kind of came out and then you've got a little bit of sludge from the, the pipes that kind of popped up. And, and I'm like, that's kind of what practicing gratitude is like when you have when you haven't addressed that emotional state and it's it's like waking up to trying to practice gratitude in that state it's kind of like waking up to that sink full of spit and sludge and you know pieces of dinner and just like really gross like who wants to wake up to that like no wonder it doesn't work if they're like ew that's that's not working for me because it just it's kind of sitting on top of this layer of all this sludge and you know looking at gratitude from that inside out approach that let's start inside first let's start looking at you know kind of that inner transformation first let's get those pipes clear right and and let gratitude just start flowing you know like a faucet in a sink that actually works and you know that flowing water think of that like gratitude actually working and i i love it's a little gross but i love that analogy because it kind of sticks with you You're like yeah i get it it's like trying to practice gratitude with a clog sink yeah it's a great visual i mean like i had the visual going and i was like oh <laughs> but then, yeah i i mean i saw it as as you continue to practice as you build those those again habitual patterns of gratitude that it it clears the sink it's it's yeah. like yeah and then then it starts to flow naturally yeah yeah beautiful 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 so now are you still on your um journey with with autoimmune or were you able to transition um into a healthier or, or do you still have it i i do still have it um it's it's a work in progress um the i have made a complete shift in terms of just 
mind, body, spirit, everything from my health has completely, completely shifted. And especially the last couple of years, um, you know, looking at the pandemic from a place of fear versus a place of health. And, you know, unfortunately, no one talked about being healthy, right? Everyone talked about being afraid. So, um, you know, so really being on that journey of, you know, making my health better every single day. So yes, I am, I am still on the journey, but, um, you know, gratitude is certainly at the center of everything. And, and, and again, I only ask because me personally think, I think that it, it's not so much a destination of cured or fixed, or it's that being able to live in gratitude and, and uh, love and shining hope and being a light for others while still on healing journey, that's, that's so beautiful. That's like the purpose. And um, so I give you kudos for being able to shine a beautiful light of hope into the world as you continue along that journey. Oh, thank you so much, Terry. Yeah. I mean, again, I always thought I've been writing this book for eight years. <laughs> I've been talking about it since the show started, but I, I kept for such a long time. I was like, Oh, I have to be, you know, fixed before I can put it out there in the world. And then I came to the realization that no, it's about being off, able to offer hope to people that uh, you can still smile and have a joyous life and be full of peace and tranquility, even in the midst of your journey. Absolutely. And, and, you know, the beautiful, the beautiful part of all of this is that it doesn't matter what your past is gratitude works, you know, it's just, there's, it just works and it's just dialing into the right frequency of getting gratitude to work based on your personality and based on your inner transformation. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Now you have something to offer to the audience, correct? Yes, yes, I do. I have um, actually created a uh, personalized um, page. It's pinkfortitude.com slash Terry, T-E-R-I. And I've got um, personalized resources just for your listeners. There's a quiz. I keep talking about, um, you know, personalized approach to gratitude. There's actually a quiz that you can take and um, on what is your gratitude and grit personality and you'll get customized results based on your personality with different ways to get started that is really going to match up with your with your personality and i've got a few other resources on there as well oh that's so awesome i'm going to go take it just because i want to know like yeah. what's my what's my gratitude personality <laughs> yeah it's fun and i even have um i think for most of them i've got a podcast episode too that you can listen to that's really kind of hones in on on the different personalities so yeah it's it's fun to kind of learn like I, I and it's based on if you're familiar with um uh dr roan's uh the disc personality um it's based on that methodology i am not and so now i'm very curious and i want to learn yes i want to learn more so yeah. wonderful and so you have different podcast episodes talking about the different oh, yes yes yeah very cool and what a great way to link it, uh, yes, and to help people grow in their knowledge and understanding of um, gratitude. I never even thought about that, Holly, like that there's different approaches to gratitude. I just was always throwing out there, you know, practice gratitude, practice gratitude, and not even thinking about, uh, right, the impact. That's really powerful because in other avenues and other ways I talk about how uh Trauma has an impact, your personality, epigenetics, uh, but yeah, about gratitude too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It all, it all, you know, it all fits. <laughs> yeah. Very powerful. Wow. Well, thanks. Yeah. For teaching me something new today. <laughs> <laughs> so how do folks uh, get in contact with you? Oh, sure. Like I said, the personalized website, uh, pinkfortitude.com slash Terry, T-E-R-I. And I typically hang out on Instagram. You can find me there at Pink Fortitude. And then uh, also my podcast is Gratitude Builds Fortitude. So you can find me on Apple and Spotify and all of the podcast places. Awesome. So was there anything else that you wanted to address that we haven't had an opportunity to talk about yet today? Oh my goodness. We, you know, we talked about so much. I appreciate that. Um, you know, really just 
if you're in a place and you know, you're like, I really want to try gratitude, but I'm just not feeling grateful. Just don't give up on it. You know, just, just start opening the door a little bit, you know, just little tiny cracks and a little bit every day and just don't give up because gratitude is, it's like love and joy and happiness and, you know, 8 billion people on the planet, like you it's, it is for you. So I just wanted to say, if, if you are in a, in a place that seems a little dark, don't give up. Yes. And, and what a, what a shift can happen. And I, I love it that you look at it holistically and it really does in a mind, body, soul level of um, part of my meditation this morning was sending gratitude to symptoms that I'm having. So uh, yeah, being able to, I have this horrible rash all over my body. And so trying to send gratitude to the rash, that can, that can be hard, but I was like, all right, I, it's, it's trying to tell me something. I'm trying, it, it has Absolutely. a lesson for me, right? Our body always tells us it's just a matter of, do we listen or not? Yeah. Yeah. And is that what you do with your, um, in your coaching is, is not just the gratitude component component because that you do, um, health coaching, right? Yes. I'm a certified natural health coach. Um, so yeah, so I look at it from a holistic perspective, uh, even though gratitude and, and, you know, kind of that mindset approach is, is where we start and, and is my specialty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's so needed on, you know, when you go to Western medicine, I try and I, I know I sound like I bash Western medicine here a lot, but, um, it, it's, it's just so tunnel visioned on just fix this symptom. Take this here's a pill. symptom. Here's the pill. Exactly. Yes, right. Where, I mean, I see a nutritionist myself who I swear saved my life with all of this mold poisoning going on, but, um, yeah. So you, uh, oh my gosh, offering the whole person, like looking at the whole person, it's just so incredibly powerful. So again, I say yay to you and thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah for sure. So, all right. Well, I just wanted again, thank you for joining me today on the show and uh, for the beautiful work you're doing in the world. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right. Well, everyone, thanks for joining us today on the Healing Place podcast. And remember until next time, be gentle with yourself. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Terry Welbrock again. Just wanted to thank you for listening to the episode today. And remind you to visit my website as well as the academy.terrywellbrock.com for the courses. But if you go to my website, terrywellbrock.com, you can sign up for my monthly Hope for Healing newsletter, which is also jam-packed with information and strategies and blog pieces and guest blog pieces and links to shows um, and just a great space for uh, Thanks for, again, being here and being a part of this healing space. I very much appreciate you. All right. Bye-bye.